Today, we are talking about conditional statements. The conditional statement is in the form of if P, then Q. The letter P symbolizes our antecedent. In other words, the first statement, the statement following the if. The letter Q symbolizes the consequent, our second statement following the letter then. It's possible to reason from a knowledge that P exists to a knowledge that Q exists, because if P, then Q. Here we are affirming the antecedent, and therefore we know that the consequent also exists. This is known as the modus ponens, and it is correct reasoning. However, we can't go in the other direction. We can't say, look, we've observed Q exists, therefore P exists. No, that's a fallacy. It does not always work. And a fallacy is something that cannot guarantee that true premises will lead to a true conclusion. This fallacy is known as affirming the consequent. What about denying the antecedent? Not P. Can we therefore conclude not Q? No, this is also a fallacy. It's the fallacy of denying the antecedent. If P doesn't exist, there may be some other way that Q could still exist. However, let's try it this way. Let's deny the consequent. Suppose we see that Q does not exist. We may then figure that P does not exist. That's known as the modus tollens. So here's one way to remember what we can do and what we cannot do with conditional claims. Affirming the antecedent is all right. That's the modus ponens. Denying the consequent is all right. That's the modus tollens. So remember, AA good, DC good. Try remembering this sentence. If you're an alcoholic, in the District of Columbia, it's good to go to an AA meeting. Affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent are fallacies. Here's one way to remember that. If you steal an air conditioner, the district attorney will put you in jail. AC, air conditioner. DA, District Attorney. Fallacies.